what's rule number one of spring football? Don't overreact to the spring game. Well, certainly going to try my best when it comes to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. Disclaimer, there's not going to be a ton of talk about defense in this reaction. This is going to be one of the best defensive units in the Big Ten Conference. The talk before the spring game and especially after the spring game is about the offensive side of the ball. An offense where last year their coordinator, Marcus Satterfield, seemed to just throw his hands up in the air midway through the season because of injuries, because of turnovers, and say, hey, we're going to play option football, chuck it deep every once in a while and see if we get lucky. They got lucky sometimes, they didn't get lucky all the time. Now, when you look at what Marcus really wants his offense to be, that's the spring game. What he showed on Saturday is what Marcus Satterfield wants his offenses to look like at Nebraska. A lot of 11 personnel, three receivers in the formation, four receivers in the formation. I really don't recall them a time ever going under center, putting a lot of faith into these quarterbacks to step up and make plays. Let's talk about Dylan Raiola. Boy, is there a lot to talk about. There was some uncertainty. How quickly would he take control of this offense? How quickly would he learn things? What would he look like in really our first public viewing of him in the spring game? The first thing that really popped out to me when it comes to Dylan Raiola was his command and his confidence in this offense. With so many different things, it looked like he was a second-year guy or a third-year guy out there. Okay, His ability to go through his progressions, his ability to really understand what Marcus Satterfield was expecting of him and what the expectations of him were in this offense really stood out to me. It looked like a guy that had been in this system for multiple years, not just a couple of months. This kid should be going to his high school prom. Instead, he's adapting, learning, and controlling a Big Ten offense. Across a lot of these spring games, I'm looking at you, Arch Manning. There's a lot of wow throws, deep balls down the field, and Dylan had those. But one thing that really stood out to me was his ability to fit the ball into a tight window. There were a couple of throws where he had to really rear back, use that big arm of his, but also had to put the ball exactly where it needed to be for Nebraska to keep on moving the chains, only in the place where his receiver could get it when there was one or two defensive backs right in the hip pocket when there was a really tight window to throw to. That's a more realistic example of what you're going to see in the Big Ten week in and week out. We all love seeing the throws going deep. Wow, look at that throw when the receiver beats the DB and there's a five-yard cushion or a 10-yard cushion. But what really stands out to me is his ability to fit the ball into that space when there's tight coverage, but also not forcing the ball into each one of those situations. That goes back to his comfortability in this offense. If it's not there, and you saw this a couple of times, if it's not there, let's just run out of bounds and get a two-yard gain or a three-yard gain, live to fight another day. We saw it on his high school tape that Dylan Raiola can throw an absolutely gorgeous deep ball. The spring game did absolutely nothing to dispute that fact. His accuracy, his touch, his arm strength, putting the ball exactly in the right place on those deep throws was on display in Lincoln on Saturday. Especially the connection to Jalen Lloyd. That is a connection that is going to be on display many times throughout this season. The track speed of Jalen over the top, the arm strength and the touch and the accuracy on those deep balls of Dylan over the top. That is going to be a part of Nebraska football that maybe we haven't seen in a long time, if ever. The combination of Dylan and Jalen Lloyd over the top is going to stretch the defense And it's going to open up so many other different parts about what Nebraska really wants to do. I think a big reason why Dylan Raiola was successful in this spring game and why he's going to be successful once we get to football in September of 2024 is what he has around him. 
And what he has around him was on full display in Lincoln on Saturday. When you talk about the wide receiver room, of course we mentioned Jalen Lloyd, but there's veteran wide receivers and Isaiah Nayer and Jamal Banks. Isaiah Garcia Castaneda was not out there. There's good young players. You got your Malachi Coleman's. You got your Alex Bullock's. It was on display with the players. And then of course there were some players that were not in this spring game that there is a multitude of talent at the wide receiver position. And that's going to help a young quarterback where you don't feel like you got to lock on to a number one guy or a number two guy. I remember thinking about halfway or maybe into the third quarter of the spring game, hmm, I really haven't given much thought to this offensive line, and that's a good thing because the offensive line maybe didn't stand out, and that's because they were doing a really good job protecting Dylan Raiola. They were doing a really good job paving the way for this run game because in years past, this Nebraska O-line has stood out. They have maybe been the weak point of this offense as a whole when you combine the last few years. Injuries has certainly played a part in that. Shuffling guys along this offensive line has certainly played a big part in that. But this is an experienced group. When we talk about the success of Dylan, once again, it's the sum of all of the parts and an experienced offensive line, if they can stay healthy, the Ben Scotts of the world, the Bryce Benharts of the world, the Turner Corcorans of the world, the Teddy Parachkas of the world, if they can all stay healthy, this is a really good group. And a key for a freshman quarterback is giving him time. When you talk about how defenses approach game planning during the season on a young quarterback. We got to get to him. We got to rattle him. We got to get him to make bad decisions. If this offensive line can keep Dylan upright, he's going to make better decisions. He's going to make more good decisions than he does bad decisions. Now, I feel Dylan has extreme confidence. He has extreme control, and he has extreme command of this offense. I feel like he's wise beyond his years between the years in his brain as a quarterback. But having that great offensive line to keep him upright, to be able to go through all of those progressions, is certainly going to be able to help. An unsung position that is going to stand out for Nebraska, I believe, this year is that tight end room. There's a lot of really good tight end rooms in the Big Ten. Colston Loveland might be the best tight end in all of college football playing at Michigan. Of course, you got the room at Iowa that always has good tight ends. Luke Lachey and Addison Estrenga this year. Oregon has a really good tight end room with Terrence Ferguson and Patrick Herbert. But Thomas Fedoni and Nate Borkircher, specifically Thomas Fedoni, he's a little bit of a unicorn out there. He's extremely difficult to cover. And that was on display once again in the spring game. He's a big guy, but he runs like a deer. He's a little bit of a matchup nightmare. He can post up a smaller defensive back. He can outrun a linebacker. Okay, there's going to be a lot of depth across the formation at wide receiver. But I can see it time and time again on a third and five when you need a play, when all of the focus could be on the perimeter. Thomas Fedoni is just another one of those weapons. That's the pass game. And that's really good, but this is complementary football. Whether it's offense and defense, whether it's run game, whether it's pass game, Matt Rule wants to play a complementary style of football. Matt Rule still wants to be physical. He still wants to run the football. No Gabe Irvin Jr., no Ramir Johnson in the spring game. Somebody has to step up. And if you listen to my spring game preview, with John Johnston, the coordination, I said at the end, watch out for Dante Dowdell. He ran hard. This is a guy that is extremely difficult to bring down. The throw game, an increased threat of the throw game, is going to open up numbers in the box for them to run the football. I think you saw that at times in the spring game. How Marcus Satterfield lays out this offense where maybe you spread them out three wide and four wide and you have an experienced good offensive line and you have a running back like Dante Dowdell, that's a matchup that can be taken advantage of in the run game. And then if you run 
run, run. Everybody creeps up. All of a sudden, you got man coverage on some of those speed guys on the outside, and you got a quarterback that can deliver the football. You see how this is all coming together? You see how complementary football is coming into place? You see how this is all working together? Year two is when we usually have seen the jump with Matt Rule football teams, and I know it's just a spring game, but this game, I think, proved what Nebraska wants to be. I see a potential tremendous improvement on the offensive side of the ball, and you complement that with what they have on the defensive side of the football. There's going to be a surprise team in the Big Ten this year, Is it going to be the Nebraska Cornhuskers? I want to hear your thoughts. Are you drinking the Kool-Aid right now in Huskerland? Or are you saying, hey, Ted, let's pump the brakes. Let's wait and see. I'm certainly excited about what Nebraska has to offer. Leave all things Nebraska spring game in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted, where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.